Hey, we're we're joined by a, a Big East tournament champ now. Get to keep adding some titles when we introduce you on these, Alex. So welcome, welcome back. Thank you, and I hope we add some more in a couple weeks. Yeah, well, yeah, we, we we've got a lot more to add. So uh, we'll we'll see what we do in a, in a few weeks here. But uh, let's start by looking back at, at the Big East tournament a little bit. Uh, you guys obviously accomplished your goal, taking home the the trophy there. What was the the experience of the week like in New York? It was amazing. I think you always get like a new feeling of adrenaline every time you play in the Big East tournament just from Madison Square Garden and, you know, the other 10 teams are right in your area and like, yeah. you know, everyone's competing for the same prize. So um, really, it's so special and just it's such a unique tournament, just the lighting, the sound, everything that goes on in the Big East tournament. There's really nothing like it. So you, you you go get through the the three games. I, I've got to ask, what was the toughest of the three games? Because outside of last year's NCAA tournament run, usually every game isn't super easy. But uh, so yeah. so which of these three was was the toughest one you had in the uh, Big East? I'd say Marquette, just yeah. from how talented they are. Beating them three times is really really hard to do. And then the fatigue, the fatigue was at least for me, it was a factor. And just playing. You know, we played a real physical game against St. John's the game before who, you know, they crashed the glass. They just played physical defense, pressed the entire game. So that was already an energy draining game. And then, you know, to play in less than 24 hours against a really scrappy and tough Marquette team, it was, yeah. I'd say that was the toughest. I was just going to say, how how tired are the legs in that third <laughs> game in, in the three days? Exhausted. <laughs> they, are, they were exhausted for me, at least. But, um... You know, I think you always just find like that extra gear inside of you that keeps you going and just it's like, you know, you can complain, you could think that you're tired right now, but, you know, nothing will replace that feeling of just like the joy of winning, like really replaces yeah. that like tiredness and like, you know, that it'll be all worth it once you get that win. Is that something you felt like both teams? I mean, you look at that market cat game especially at the start both teams really struggled to to score you know for what first 10 minutes i feel like it was like a you know four four game basically um is that just kind of tire legs at that point or or championship nerves a little bit what, what do you think led to a start like that i think it was really just tired legs i don't think i don't think it was championship nerves just from we have so many guys from this year's team that like played in the biggest stage possible yeah. college basketball so we weren't nervous going into the championship game. And then, I mean, that's the same for Marquette. They were in it last year, so I don't think they were nervous about it either. I think really it's just fatigue and just – it was uncommon just to see, you know, two really good offensive teams just start off so slow. So, um, yeah, I'd definitely – I'd probably say it was more fatigue than nervousness. Especially because it seemed like both of you guys were able to to get some decent looks too that I, I feel like if we flash back, what, three weeks ago in Hartford, you guys were two weeks in, ago in Milwaukee, <laughs> you guys were both making those. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What was it like going up against these teams now for a third time? Because I feel like that's got to be really, really tough. And I know we talked a little bit about it the last time we spoke in anticipation of going up against these teams for a third time. But when you actually do it, how, how tough is that? It's extremely tough. I mean, to beat a team three times in a row is difficult enough in general, but to be a Big East team three times in a row with how great these coaches are, with how talented these players are, it's extremely tough. So um, we knew that it would be a task for us, and we knew that wouldn't it wouldn't be easy at all. And then, you know, on top of that, we're trying to end some teams' this seasons as well. So really just trying to, you know, we know that they're not going to give up, and we know that they're not going to back down just because we go on a 10-0 run. Like, they're going to yeah. continue to fight. So, um Really, it's super difficult, and I think beating three team three a team three times in a row is definitely it's an impressive mark. So, so take me through what the celebrations like afterwards. Confetti's <laughs> coming down. You're back in the locker room. What's it all like? Once we're back in the locker room, we're turning on the speaker. We're turning on the well. Before that, actually, hold on. We're backing up. We're got we got we're patiently waiting for Coach Hurley to come back into the locker room. I kid you. We probably held the waters for ten minutes straight, just waiting for him, and then um. <laughs> He came in with his own water and just, you know, it was everyone splashed water everywhere. And it was, you know, it was, it was an awesome, it was an awesome, you know, locker room. And then the speaker comes on, we're dancing, we're dancing with everybody. We got uh, some of the uh, the coaches and the staff's sons and uh, yeah. daughters, like family members are in there dancing with us. So it was amazing. And um, 
yeah i mean it's always just nice to have the feeling of cutting down nets no matter what championship it is and you know to do what we sought out to do since june and really like doing that at msg2 it was definitely a feeling that's never gonna that no one's ever gonna forget it's just the memories are gonna last forever Who's the guy on the team that's the sneaky, underrated dancer that, that we might not think is a good dancer, but actually is? <laughs> hmm. I don't know, because obviously people know about, like, Hassan, and I feel like that's, like, an obvious answer for the dancing. Other than that, I don't really know. Maybe, maybe Solo. I'd say the freshman. Maybe, like, Solo, possibly Steph, possibly okay. Andre Johnson. All right, so you got, yeah, uh, that little group. That little like, group is just, like you got a good group there. Samson, maybe if Samson decides to, you know, let out his shell and you know start dancing, maybe Samson. <laughs> uh, let's see. It, so after you, you guys celebrated, now you guys spent the night in New York. What's the bus ride back like that that next day on on Sunday? Honestly, we drove back. Yeah, the next morning, and really. It was just super, it was super, you know, I'd say it was exciting for like the first five, 10 minutes, but then after it was honestly just quiet. I'm not going to lie to you. We were yeah. so tired. Everybody was sleeping. Um, Yeah. And everyone was just exhausted. And then the coaches were up in the front just watching film. So they were watching film of, I assume, I think it was the two games yeah. that we just played. And then we got back to campus and then coaches gave us like three hours off. And then right before selection Sunday, we watched, um, the film of the St. John's game and the Marquette game. So really it's, it's nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you go, I mean, from all of that and then it's into selection Sunday and all of that. How, how did it feel going into it this year? Cause I, I feel like you guys at least had a general idea, like you're going to be a one seed. You're probably going to be in the East for the, you know, most likely um, yeah. not really a ton of suspense. Like last year, there was some question into like where you're going to be seated, where you're going to go. So how did it feel going into it this year? It was it was exciting just from you're always excited just to find out who you're gonna play and who's in your region. Yeah. So I think once they said our name, I think I was just like getting anxious and just like, you know, suspense was hitting. Like, who are we playing? Who is the possible next matchup? Who's in our region? Who who might we have to see? And um, you know, then after that, after our region say, you can just relax and like start thinking about it. We started searching up Stetson on ESPN and just start get them going. And then um. Then after, I think really during selection Sunday, you just see where the Big East teams go, and um, you know, obviously you've competed against them for months now, and you just want to see who they might possibly have to go up against. Yeah, I mean, I know that the Twitter faithful and, and and the rest of the fan base was pretty surprised with how things turned out for the rest of the Big East from a guy who's played against all of these teams. <laughs> and I mean, you you played against you know Kansas Gonzaga, but you've also played against teams that got left out, like a, a Seton Hall, St. John's, Providence. Were you surprised to see those teams get left out? Very surprised. I thought it was ridiculous. I'm not gonna lie. To put three Big East teams in it, I was shocked because obviously us, Marquette, and uh, Creighton deserve to be in it. But then not having seen Hall, Providence, or St. John's, who have who have great wins. I mean, Seen Hall beat us and Marquette. St. John's played us close three times. They beat Creighton. They have all these teams have great wins and um. I don't know. I was I was just surprised. I'm not gonna lie. And I thought the Big East is the Big East when I after just playing in it yeah. is way better than a three bid league. Yeah. So um, I was definitely caught off guard. And I know everyone else was very caught off guard too after because once our names are um after our name got announced, we were like, all right, this is like the last chance for like a Providence scene Hall or St. John's yeah. to get in. And like we were like holding the suspense, waiting to see where they'd go. And then we were just all shocked. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely uh, a surprise there. As the bracket gets revealed, and you you see who you're playing, who some of those possible uh, opponents might be later on. What were your initial thoughts as you saw it all come through? I was excited. I know. I think we have a very tough region, but we're excited for it. I think, um, you know, it's cool just seeing how they put three teams that made it to the final four last year pretty much that could go up against each other up to the sweet 16 and then um you know having also it's cool just to see them put um you know the tournament champs of you know the sec auburn and then um illinois oh, who won yeah. their conference and iowa state too so yeah. it's a tough it's a tough one but at the end of the day it's the hardest tournament so if you want to win you got to beat the best and 
I'm excited for our region and I, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I mean, you never know how these things are going to work out as these games start getting played. Uh, so always, always fun to see what it looks like initially, and then see what it ends up uh, being in in the end. There, so you you, you see Stetson come up. Uh, what what's the first thing as you, you kind of start looking into to Stetson that kind of pops out to you? Their offense, they have a very good offense. They shoot the three very well. They have guard play that's really good. They have a big who's very good. He's very athletic. And then um, but I think really um, Jalen, he really pops out and just, you know, he had 43 points in their conference championship game. Uh, Swenson, he had 30 points in one of the tournament games, just really lifted them up to, you know, move on in their conference championship. So um, really, it's just a super talented team. And I think they're an underrated team. And I think, You know, it's not a typical Sweet 16 team, in my opinion. I think they should be way higher than Sweet 6, uh, not Sweet 16. <laughs> they should be way higher than a, a 16 seeded team. And um, yeah, they got a lot of talent. Those teams are scary, especially if they, they shoot a lot of threes. And um, those teams are scary to play against. So we got to be ready to go. And, you know, we're excited for the matchup, too, just knowing how talented they are. Yeah. Um, as you get ready for the game this week, what, what what's prep like this week heading into the, the game on Friday? Yeah, uh, we had yesterday off, and then today we just we got a bunch of shots up and, you know, started prepping for Stetson. And then um, really this week, I think it's just going to be the same what we normally do, just continue to, you know, drill in what we want to do defensively, continue to work on executing offensively our sets, and then um, really just continue to, you know, get better. I think more importantly, we just got to stay in the present, stay in the moment, not look too far ahead and not look, you know, over past opponents because this is the best time of the year and every team is really good in March Madness. So um, really just taking it day by day, staying the present, but more importantly, just getting better. We, you know, we got to continue to get better if we want to go back to back. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's obviously uh, a lot of noise out there about you guys and, and your chances to repeat that's out there a lot in, in the media. You hear that on ESPN, CBS, wherever you're kind of tuning in. How, how do you block out some of that noise that comes this time of year and really stay focused on, on the games at hand and not just thinking ahead to big picture things? Honestly, I, this is at least for me. It's been blocked out now, I'm not going to lie. I think we've heard about these talks since really – the beginning of the year and then after teams saw how good not teams like the media saw how good we are and you know other teams saw how good we are too so really it's been talked about for a while now and um i think we've done a great job of blocking it out and not focusing on it at all just from you know we're always focused on the moment and just always focused on the day-to-day -day process to where that's what's most important to us right now and the coaches they do a great job of emphasizing that they do a great job of keeping you know, keeping us, you know, in the moment and just, you know, humbled at times too, because we, we, we hear the outside noise. We know what people are talking about, but the coaches tell us the truth. They, t they keep us humbled and that's what keeps us going too. So, um, but yeah, at least for me, it's been blocked out. So none of the stuff that's happening now, it's, it doesn't matter to me at all what people say. What's the key to you and kind of staying focused for, you know, all of not not only all of these games in the tournament, but especially th this first one, you you get that one 16 up until a couple of years ago, you know, we hadn't seen 16s take down ones, but how, how do you keep yourself focused in not looking ahead to, you know, the potential of, of what the bracket looks like later on and staying focused on, on Stetson? Yeah, I think the excitement and like you start getting anxious, just want to get out there on the court. So really, when we get out there Friday afternoon, we're just going to be super excited to play and just the adrenaline really is going to kick into what, you know, we're really in March Madness again. It's like, this is the best time of the year. We get to compete for another natty and just really, and it, we know, the returners know it's game by game and we never looked far ahead during last year's run. So we just got to do the same this year and just, you know, take a day game by game. And we know our only, the only thing on our mind right now is Stetson. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, After that, we'll focus on whoever, but still, um, I think we're just going to be all super excited and just, you know, ready to go on Friday. We can't wait. I know we can't wait. From like a, a mentality point heading into these games and into the tournament, how does it feel co compared to last year, kind of having a year of tournament experience behind, behind you and under your belt? Yeah, we know what's expected from the tournament. We know how difficult it is. We know how... um challenging it can be so 
we're mentally there. We're we've we're mentally tough enough this year's team too to where we could withstand runs and we could, you know, really go on runs too. So um I think we've been through every situation possible, like game wise, whether that's a grinded out game or a fast paced game, to where we're ready for whatever happens or whatever game throws at us in the tournament. But really, we just also I know the vets, we want to experience winning another natty just from it was the best feeling. Yeah. And then the yeah. new guys, I mean, a lot of them, well, this is Cam's first time playing in March Madness, so he's excited. But really, the young guys, this is their first time playing in March Madness, too. So really, just the, the anxiousness out there, just the excitement. And, you know, they want to start off their college careers on, you know, a very impressive mark, too. It's the best time of the year. And no, I'm not just talking about March Madness. It's Easter kielbasa season over at Martin Russell's Meats in New Britain. Martin Russell's is making their famous Easter kielbasa recipe now until March 31st. You can find your favorite Russell products in your local Connecticut grocery store or at their retail store in New Britain. And if you do head to the retail store, check out pickuprussells.com to place your order ahead of time to skip the Easter week lines. Out of state? The Russell family can ship their products to you at martinrosal.com. Use code Jared now through March 31st for 10% off the subtotal on either of those two sites. Now go support a UConn fan-owned business. So you, you talk about the young guys. Let's talk about one in particular who, who made a big impact on, on Saturday yeah. night. And that's Jalen. <laughs> uh, what, what, what were you thinking as you saw him go off? I mean, we've talked on these episodes a lot about him and the potential and what you've seen from him in practice, and it, it seems like it all just kind of clicked in that game. I was so happy. I was so excited for him, seeing the swagger that he had. He's celebrating <laughs> after threes. I loved it. But um, I'm super proud of him just from – I mean, he's the guy I go up against every day in practices, and we continue to get each other better. And he's gotten me so much better throughout this year, and I think – it's only time for him to, you know, do that just from he's done it so many times in practices, his confidence levels through the roof, and now he's getting more valuable time. So it's really just only going to go up for from here for him. And I mean, he's a special player. And for him to do that on Saturday, I mean, he was, I believe he was the reason why we won this game. He really got us to a double digit lead. He got the momentum going in our favor. Then once he started hitting, Everyone else started hitting. Tristan was hitting. Haas made a three. So, really, he really got us going, and he really set the engine up for, you know, getting that win. So, I was super happy for him. Told him after the game that you won us this game. I couldn't be prouder of him. And, I mean, it's only the start for him. I mean, this this game is going to be nothing compared to what he does in the future. I, I think one thing that was spe- special about this team, and I, I think it's not just you, but it, it seems like it's a mentality that's carried throughout the team. But there was a quote you had where you were like, uh, you know, he came in and sub- subbed it in for you, and you told coach just like, let him keep going. And mm-hmm. it, it seems like that's something unique. We're not every player on every team is is willing to kind of take a, a backseat when someone's, you know, kind of going off right there and having their moment. Take me through just your thought process there. And, and, just kind of the culture that, that's been built at UConn where you guys are all just seem like really selfless players for one another. Yeah. I was sitting next to coach Moore during that. I was telling coach Moore the, and that um, I was, I knew I wasn't having my best game. I knew I wasn't, you know, playing as well as I, as I would have liked to. And then um, I seen him starting to go off and we started getting this lead and we started doing, we started playing way better out there. And I was just telling coach Moore, Coach, you got to keep him in. Like, you don't got to play me the rest of the game. You could tell Coach this. I don't care because all I care about is add another ring to the collection. And whether that's Stewie helping us get the ring or whatever. But um, really, it's really in the culture. It's from Coach Hurley. Just how you see it from how unselfish we are on offense with just passing up good shots or great shots. But it really just goes deeper than that. And just we care about each other's success for so much. You saw it all the time, too, when – um. If Donovan wasn't having a great game, you see Samson out there and Samson killing, and Donovan's always the first one cheering for him and super excited for him. And that's the same with everybody else on this team, that we don't care at all whose game it is. It's just as long as we win. And, um, I mean, Stewie helped us win that game, and I was so happy for him. And, you know, he's the reason why that game I'm able to add another, you know, ring to the collection, why our team's able to get another ring to the collection and really – that's all we care about. That's all we care about is winning championships here. All right. So let, let's take a, we'll, we'll go to some of the questions that, that got sent in. We always have some fun ones here. So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll start with this one. Um, 
really good UConn crowds throughout the, the Big East tournament there at MSG. Yes. Are you guys able to to notice and kind of pick up like during a big run when the, the UCONN chant gets uh, broken out there? Is that something you guys uh, here and are, are able to pick up on? Hell yeah. We notice everything that happens in MSG. We notice there are a lot more fans, which are understandable, I guess, compared to the St. John's game versus the Xavier game. Yeah, We noticed yeah. that. We were, we were – we were shocked. We thought there'd be more UConn fans or Savior. And then we saw the explosion happening against St. John's with the UConn chance and all that stuff. So that was electric. So I'd, I'd say definitely against St. John's, we noticed it. And then against Marquette, you know, it was the, um, shoot, what happened? It was the, I was so confused. We were in a timeout and I heard a bunch of booing and then cheers, the alternating thing. That was, <laughs> that was dope. I was looking up. I was like, damn, what is happening? And then, um, I seen a Marquette fan and then a Yukon fan after I was like, all right, yeah, Yukon, Yukon nations here. So uh this one, uh this one's a fun one. We we we've seen some of your teammates uh do some acting recently. It it, it seems like who, who who are you giving the Oscar to for uh best performance there? <clears throat> Is it not Coach Hurley? If it's not yeah. Coach Hurley, then um hmm. Adama. Adama was fantastic in his in his little role. He was he was a surprise in the commercial. Yeah. Uh, Donovan's doing way better than I thought in the commercials. He's doing a good job. Cam's caught me off guard. He's he's really, you know, he's not big into the social media and all that yeah. stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm now surprised. Now he's Mr. Hollywood. Steph was bad. <laughs> Steph was bad. <laughs> Steph was bad. He needs to work on his stuff. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I wouldn't be much better. I'd be in the same category as Steph, though, so I can't really be talking. Were you surprised to see Coach in an ad like that? I was. I was very surprised. Um, I didn't expect him to do that. I didn't expect to <laughs> see the commercial. And um, honestly, it was a it was a great commercial. Yeah. I told him today. I told him today he's my favorite um actor or commercial person, whatever <laughs> whatever the term is. There you go. It's uh, it's fun fun to see those uh see those out there let's see uh what else we got all right oh this, this I hope is more i hope there's more of them i don't know i don't know if there's any more coming out but i hope there is it, maybe we got to make a commercial for the podcast uh we'll, we'll we'll get your acting chops up a little bit we'll, like, a, like a little intro a little yeah intro yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get something going um a surprise guest somewhere It'll yeah yeah ex- exactly um Let's see. All right. This is a fun one. This one comes in. So uh, a guy tweeted this one in and said it comes from his son, uh, 10 years old, uh, wants to know if you guys make it uh, to Boston, if you got to host a current teammate at your house to, to hang, who, who who are you picking for that? Um, I'm picking Samson. Okay. I've been, I've been, I think I've gotten to know him the best during my time here and just, you know, He's stuck in Connecticut a lot just from, you know, being an international student and, um, you know, always being in Connecticut. So take him up to Boston, take him up to, you know, explore my hometown. I feel like I owe him a trip for that. So right. I've gotten to know him for the past two and a half years. I'm going to take Samson. All right. That's a good, good choice there. Um, This one's a, a fun one. We, we've talked a lot about uh fan interactions but from a from a UConn fan interaction perspective do you have the your like a favorite or, or funniest fan interaction you've had <laughs> there's a bunch um <laughs> I'm gonna say two I'll tell you two fans I met um one of them actually fits with March Madness but um I'll okay. start with that one first I did um during some NIL events I'd go to Red Fox the restaurant yeah. and I'd meet with fans there and um there was one lady, and I I, don't, I forget her name, and uh, she said, like, it's been a tradition for her to where she'll eat, like, a food that's associated with um the opponent we play in March Madness. So for last year, like, Arkansas, she'd eat, like, pigs before the game. Um, the Gales, when we played Iona and uh, St. Mary, she'd eat, like, Irish food or something. And then um, okay. she said she's done it since, like, the 1990s. And like, it, yeah, it's worked well for her. So, I guess she's got to figure out something for Stetson. Gotta Stetson, eat, she has to eat the hat. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that will work out. Some gator, <laughs> gator, maybe. I don't know. I don't. Yes, yeah, probably something Florida related. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So she does that, which I thought was really cool. And um, I thought 
she might have said she'd done it for a Biggie's tournament because I asked her, like, what she ate. Because this was last year. Like, what did you eat for, like, Providence? Like, yeah. you can't eat, like, a fry or something. I don't know. But, um, something fried, fried. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I thought that was cool. That was a couple, that was like last year. And then, um, <laughs> this year, it's, um, Little Red. I want to say that's him. Yeah. He was showing up. <laughs> pumped up super energetic and like the home games yeah we see we see the energy from the yukon fans but we're in a road game and you see him run down the stairs and he's yelling donovan loves it andrew hurley loves it i mean that gets that gets us going so um seeing him do that and you know talking to him after some of the games too he's a cool guy so um yeah i definitely shout him out for sure there we go i mean that's fun i mean two two good interactions there and that almost puts my chick-fil-a thing to uh <laughs> like that that like i i feel like i'm lame now like for just eating chicken no your, your chick-fil-a is top five because clearly you missed some games and it cost us yeah. so um you know I, I i don't want to say that like what i did over the span of three days in a row was as tough as what you guys did i mean like you talk about tired legs i mean like the, the gut feels it by the end of the three days and uh three chicken sandwiches in three days it's tough it's tough to eat you know from the same restaurant three days in a row yeah it's sacrifice you sacrificed for us and um yeah but you got six more chick-fil-a visits so yeah get ready i know this this one's tricky too because i gotta i'm gonna have to reheat it on sunday because you guys play sunday if you, if you win friday so. i was thinking that yeah yeah i was thinking about sundays for you but yeah. that makes sense yeah, I'll I'll reheat it. I'll I'll see how it see how it goes. Um, is it a chicken? Is it the same like sandwich every time? Or yeah, yeah. So it, it's always the sandwich. I to try, like, try to be somewhat healthy. I got the side salad to go with it. But then uh, what was the what was the last? Oh, I I ate that before the Creighton one, and everyone started giving me crap for it. They're like, you can't get the salad anymore. So I switched. Oh, I, oh. I switched to the waffle fries. So um, it seems to have, have, have put put things back on track there. Yeah, stick with the waffle fries, please. <laughs> <laughs> it it it's been fun hearing all the all these superstitions. I mean, we we heard a lot from uh, from coach. I feel like that's the question everyone wants to ask him now. I mean, like I can't remember the last time anyone's asked a coach about the underwear they're wearing in in a tournament game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I've seen a coach's wife on Instagram like posting um how she's washing the underwear and dry drying the underwear. <laughs> So that's obviously the main superstitious that he has. Yeah. He has a couple more that I've heard about, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say those because I don't know if it's going to break or curse okay. or whatever, whatever. So I'm not going to say those. But, um, yeah, he has a bunch. i have definitely say the clothing's the main one. And then um, I guess now everybody knows his drink. So Yeah. Um, yeah. With the, the buy. So, um, yeah. I, I said I, I got to try some of that now. Maybe the the antioxidants and that'll help uh, help the gut with the uh, Chick Fil A. So uh, n- a nice go. nice combo there. Exactly. Um, <laughs> all right, make me. This might make me sound old, and and I don't feel old. But I, I as they were talking about getting ready for Stetson, the fun fact they gave out about Stetson was that the Water Boy was filmed at Stetson. Have you seen the Water Boy? I've never heard of it till yesterday. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't like, know what I'm, I'm only 31, but that makes me feel really old. Like, I mean, I guess when did it, it when did it come out? It's probably like the 90s at some because like it was like not old when I watched it, but like it was older. Like it's it's classic Adam Sandler. Right? I definitely next time you I mean, you guys got a bus trip, you guys should watch that on the way up to Brooklyn. No, no need to watch it. Does, no. does it does it support Stetson? No, no, no. It's oh. so it's, it's about a football team that's in Louisiana. But they, oh. I guess they just filmed it all at Stetson. Oh no, no I'm not watching it on the bus. It's if it's filmed on Stetson, it has something to do with Stetson. I'm not watching it unless it's Stetson basketball film. I'll watch that on the bus, but not yeah. anything filmed on the Stetson campus. That's fair. It's fair. <laughs> maybe maybe after the game, yeah, I'll watch. Maybe I'll yeah. watch it just to see what it's about. Yeah. No, I've been I've been queuing up some of the the water boy uh, gifts and uh, memes to throw out there on <laughs> on Friday, so we'll see. Oh, we'll get we'll have to get our guy uh, who puts you on. We'll we'll put you on some water boy uh, graphics afterward. <laughs> he's he's probably going to start that right now after hearing that. <laughs> oh, but um, I won't keep you much more. I know it's uh, it's a crazy time of year for you guys. So uh, enjoy the enjoy the short ride up to to Brooklyn. Where was? Oh, Albany was last year. That wasn't too far. So, um, yeah, yeah. Get, get, it's ni- nice to get Brooklyn and then, and then hopefully be in Boston. So, uh, and then yes. hopefully out to, out to Phoenix. So, uh, 
hopefully some fun fun stuff coming up. So Alex, uh, as always, uh, appreciate it. Best of luck this weekend and uh, enjoy the tournament. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah.